after 15, 20 minutes, I, I will really navigate you through the Welcome Trust DBT India Alliance, which I will keep calling India Alliance, just because it's such a mouthful. Uh, but before I get there, I uh, really thank the India, India Bioscience uh, team for uh, this wonderful meeting, the, the Young Investigator, the PDF meeting. I really enjoyed looking at the posters uh, and, and the, the really fine work that some of the Young Investigators are doing. Uh, it's also a happy hunting ground for us. So that's good. Okay. Um, we will actually discuss in the, in, the, in the discussion that follows the talks on, on many aspects of the fellowship. I'm just giving you a primer and of course the questions uh, will take you. All right. So India Alliance is really all about opportunities in biomedical research. And we provide fellowships uh, at different career stages. Uh, for people to launch their careers, establish their careers, and to be leaders. And the fields that we support are anything to do with biomedical research, whether it's basic, clinical, or public health. Uh, over the last year or so, we have gone really high on the clinical fellowships, uh, because that's where we felt that India was lagging behind. And the results uh, look very, very encouraging. So if you have friends who are MDs and want to do research, uh, pass the message. So uh, India Alliance really is a, is a partnership between the Department of Biotechnology and the Wellcome Trust. Uh, and the, there are a few very interesting things about this program. First is that uh, the government of India has given a substantial amount of money to the program. Uh, but after giving this money, they have stepped back and have let professionals run it. And that, to me, is, I think, the, the best part of the program. There is no interference from DBT, only support. And that's wonderful. Uh, the program was launched in 2008, uh, and the fellowship program uh, started in 2009. So our first batch of fellows are just finishing their fellowships uh, in this year. So this is also a good time for us to evaluate whether the program has been successful or is at least moving towards achieving the goals that uh, it was set up for. So the size of the funding program is substantial. It's to be run in two phases of five years each. We've completed the first five-year phase, we have gone through a review, and the second five-year phase is now on. Each five-year phase, uh, the funding size is 80 million pounds, which is roughly 670 crores. So the total size of the 10-year funding program is uh, roughly 1,300 crores. Uh, on that basis, we are supposed to be spending about 130 crores a year. We are not even close to that. So that's a happy situation. Uh, having said that, quality is something we insist upon. So just because the money is there, we're not going to throw it away unless we, f we feel that there is quality coming to As I said earlier, we fund the entire spectrum of human and animal biomedical research, whether it's fundamental biology, clinical research, or public health. The, there are four fellowship schemes in operation right now, uh, whether at, for basic scientists or clinical scientists or public health scientists. And they are in different career stages of individuals. So the first one is the early career fellowship, which is given to people who are in their final year of PhD or MD, and up to four years PhD or MD, up to four years after their PhD. And all these numbers that I tell you, four years or whatever, they, this is not a hard and fast rule. This is a guidance, which means that there are people who will have taken some time off from research, doing something else, raising a family, whatever, and that is all counted off. Uh, so 
If you are confused about your career track, career progression, talk to us and we'll clarify your terms. So this is essentially to launch people's careers early, uh, early on. The intermediate fellowships uh, are given to people who are four to seven years post PhD or MD. And this is really for them to be establishing uh, independent uh, research careers. The senior fellowships are given eight to 15 years post PhD or MD. And this is essentially given to people who have by that time established themselves as some leaders in their field. The, the essential requirement for a senior fellowship is that people should already be publishing corresponding author papers. They should have some other extramural grants. They should have uh, you know, mentored PhD students, postdocs. So they have already made a name for themselves. So they are you know, in the field. And our final fellowship is the Martashi Fellowship which is uh, really for, it's a very high-end fellowship for, for leaders in a, in a given area, uh, essentially to set up centers of excellence at uh, a single institution or as a partnership between more than one institution. This is a very, very flexible uh, funding mechanism. What do these fellowships offer? Well, they offer personal support, which is a nice word for salary. Uh, it offers generous research funds, uh, money for international collaborations and travel, and all our fellowships offer five years of support. Uh, so it's you know a bit longer term than most of the fellowships or grants that you get in the country. The caps are the following: uh, early career fellowship, one can write a project for up to 1.8 crores over five years, and you know. For for intermediate is 3.6, senior 4.5. Mardashi is a flexible funding mechanism. Till last year, the cap on the Mardashi Fellowship was 10 crores over five years. But from this year, we are going to a different funding model where we are letting people who put in applications decide how much money they want. All we are going to do is say, in a given year, how much money is available. And then we will let committees uh, navigate through that to see how much they want to fund in a given year. <coughs> Here is the process. Uh, it goes from a preliminary application all the way down to a, an interview with the selection committee and finally the award. The whole process takes six to eight months. All the deadlines are announced ahead of time on our website. Uh, I advise people who want to apply to look at these carefully. One thing we don't do is extend deadlines. So don't come to us a week before the deadline and say, I'm really, really stressed out. Can I get another week uh, plan ahead of time? So the preliminary application is followed by a short listing. Uh, following which full applications are invited. All full applications go through an international and expert peer review. The reviewers we select are based on the keywords that you provide in your application. Our staff search, does extensive search on Scopus and PubMed to see who are the people who are publishing regularly and publishing well in your field, and we seek them out for reviews. Uh, following the reviews and the scores, the selection committee does the shortlisting of who to invite for the interview, and then the interview is conducted by the selection committee. Uh, what is important are these three things, person, place, and project. It means that we are looking for the right person who is in the right environment and has given, uh, has a good project, a good question to ask. Uh, which can be supported. What are the statistics of the fellowship so far over the last five years? And this is relevant till February 2015. We have made 157 awards. And here is the breakup. As you can see, Intermediate is our most popular fellowship. It is also our most competitive fellowship. Uh, and currently our fellows are located at 50 plus institutions across the country. So those of you who have come with this preconceived notion 
that we fund only certain institutions, uh, that's not correct. Uh, as you can see, we fund uh, institutions across the country. And those of you who are from universities, please do apply. We need good applications from universities. Uh, many of our committee members, and I also personally believe that on this, uh, our universities, research in the universities is strengthened. India is not going to progress uh, as far as the research environment is concerned. So we are, but we are not going to lower standards for universities. The standards have to be met. So I just included one slide on some guidance to people who will apply for fellowships. Well, one fact is there that our fellowships are extremely competitive. We fund at about 10% level, may go up to about 15% in some rounds, but assume it's around 10 So here are some of the common flaws that reviewers point out in the proposals. Most often the work plan is too ambitious, there is insufficient planning in the research protocol, the language people used, use is very technical, sometimes you do have to send it to non expert reviewers or non-specialist reviewers and they find it very difficult to navigate uh, through the application. So I think it's very important for people who are writing these uh, proposals to, to be aware of this and to actually write for non-specialist audiences. It's a, it's a good thing to, to know when you're writing uh, proposals. Often uh, you, one has to search through the grant application to find out the novelty of the work, the urgency of the work. Why is this work important? And why is it important to do it now? I think those are very relevant questions that should be put up front in the proposal rather than being buried somewhere. Uh, and also the, the, the real important question, the important point of the research uh, is not very clear uh, after reading maybe just a summary of the proposal. So don't make these mistakes. All applications we feed will benefit from both mentorship as well as feedback. And this is something that many people don't go out for, uh, and they should. Many good candidates don't make it because there is poor mentorship, and they haven't really had the kind of feedback that is required to be internationally competitive. As scientists, we are not trained writers. In fact, we are awful writers. We go on and on and on uh, and don't get to the point. Uh, so that often, you know, feedback helps. Uh, but you should allow sufficient time to plan, to write your proposal, to get feedback, and to rectify things. If you're going to start thinking about writing a proposal, once you see the uh, announcement, it's already late for you. You know that we announce two deadlines for senior and intermediate, one for early fellowship, plan early. And my advice to people is plan at least six months ahead of time. Give that much time. And when you write a preliminary proposal, you assume that you will be invited to write the full application. Don't wait for us to tell you that. Because we tell you about four weeks ahead, you know, four weeks between when we tell you and the deadline, and four weeks is not enough to write a good proposal. So plan ahead, plan early. There is also something called the everyone knows that syndrome and shooting for the moon syndrome. And let me explain that. If you are very close to your research, some things are very obvious to you. But those things are not obvious to somebody who is reading your books. So don't assume that just because it is very clear to you, very obvious to you, it's also clear to someone else. Try to explain. Shooting for the moon means that if I have a 1.8 crore budget limit, it doesn't mean that you should write for a 1.8 crore budget. Whatever you write, you justify it. And often people write uh, their budgets going all the way to the cap without properly justifying 
So justification is extremely important when you're putting together a ground proposal. You have to give attention to detail. And finally, please, please don't plagiarize. You will be amazed at how much plagiarism is going on right now in grant applications. We are very strict about it. We just, just like it is so easy to plagiarize, it's also very easy to detect plagiarism. We go through every single application for plagiarism. Applications are returned to people if sufficient plagiarism is found. People have been denied. Uh, competition in a given round or have been taken out of the fellowship completely. Uh, so don't plagiarize, it's not worth it. A few success stories. Uh, Harsha, who started as an early career fellow and is actually finishing now, uh, published the first draft proteome, uh, draft map of the human proteome, uh, which was published uh, late last year. Yamuna, who was a senior fellow at uh, LCBS in Bangalore, was selected by Cell as the uh, as one of the 40 uh, young scientists under 40 years of age internationally. And over the last three years, uh, our fellows have been awarded the Bhatnagar Prize, which is the highest mid-career prize in India. Uh, Shantanu. Uh, for 2012, Yamuna for 2013, and Ruth for 2014. Uh, leadership in science is something that is very close to our heart. Uh, India Alliance, we know, is not going to much make much of a difference in terms of quantity in the country. It is quality that we are targeting at. And we hope that our fellows will become leaders of Indian science tomorrow. And this is something that we will go all out to support them and to provide them the necessary uh, tools. We also engage with the scientific community uh, and we engage by carrying out both national and international outreach programs. We have science communication workshops which we seem to be doing more and more. Uh, so on an average now we, we, have, we have two kinds of science communication workshops. One is a two day long workshop which happens in Hyderabad where we invite uh, students, postdocs from all over the country. But we also go to campuses to conduct one-day workshops where we talk about ethics, we talk about how to write manuscripts and grants, how to make good presentations, write CVs, job letters, and so on and so forth. These workshops have become very popular. We call them SciCom 101. Uh, so it's really the, the essentials of science communication. And We've been doing this roughly at the rate of about one or two every month. Uh, so the, so if, if you want to invite us to your campus, please write to us and we'll be happy to come by. Especially want to go to universities uh, to, to educate PhD students there. We also have public engagement activities, which includes awards to our fellows <coughs> on taking their research to the public. The first such award has just been made to uh, Mukund at LCBS, who wants to take his research through a dance performance to the public at large. Uh, we do public lectures in 2013 uh, in collaboration with ISA Pune. We ran uh, a series of public lectures called Evolution of the Human Mind. 2014-15, uh, we are doing a series called the NH70. Uh, because this is the 70th year of Hershey's famous experiment. Uh, and next year, hopefully, in 15-16, you know, we'll, we'll plan something else. So we do engage with the public in, in multiple ways. We now have a full-time public engagement officer who runs many of these activities and has started bring up, bringing out a very nice newsletter. Uh, you can see that on our website. You can also subscribe to that by writing to her. Our website actually is terrible, uh, and we are improving it. So over the next uh, maybe two months, you will see a new website, which you will hopefully also be able to access through your cell phone and other mobile devices. OK, so here is 
the, the here is the website address. We have an info box. If you have any questions, you can write to that, and within 48 hours, somebody will respond to you. These are the deadlines that are coming up uh, in the near future, uh, and all these are on the website. The research training fellowship for clinicians is something we started last year. This is a two-year fellowship for people who have just finished their MD and want to get into a research track but have never done research. This is a dual mentor program where they work with a basic scientist and a clinical scientist to train. So I'm going to stop there and uh, if you have any questions, we'll take it now or during the uh, discussion.